Well, well, welcome to today's talk, Sunday evening, the 20th of March. It looks like the Omicron variant is about to run rampant through China, and we'll look at that in context of a few other countries. Let's start off with a bit of background, though, before we look at the international situation about Hong Kong. Now, in Hong Kong, um, the numbers have been remarkably low for most of the pandemic because they've had excellent control measures, highly organised society. But now um, the Omicron variant has basically, uh, well, there's been an extreme wave of Omicron variant in Hong Kong. Now, at the moment, basically everywhere is shut, beaches, theatres, everywhere is basically closed down. Gyms, libraries are shut. Only two people can meet in public, not three or four. The strategy so far has been to keep the virus out. Now, this has largely worked in Hong Kong, and this is part of the problem because people were looking around. There was no cases of COVID, so a lot of people, especially older people, didn't bother getting vaccinated because they were doing such a good job of keeping it out. Why vaccinate against the disease that isn't present? But of course, we've always known that it's likely to invade at any time. And of course, that's exactly what's happened. And the reason there's been such a lot of difficulties in Hong Kong is the vaccination rate, especially in the elderly, is low. That, combined with the fact they've had very, very little naturally induced immunity, because that's the only two places you get immunity from, short-term immunity from the vaccines, or we believe longer-term immunity from natural infection, and they've had neither. So that's why they've had such a devastating wave. And this is what I'm worried about in China. Could this same thing happen in China? We'll see it's less likely, but it's not impossible. Now, there's been trust issues about controls because some people in Hong Kong believe that a lot of the measures that have been taken have been political because, of course, there's been political turmoil in Hong Kong over the past couple of years, which we're not going to go into now. But but um, people mistrust authority because they think that things might be done for political reasons rather than for uh, biological reasons. Uh, residents blocks suddenly cut off. So, so whole blocks just cut off, closed off before everyone's tested. So quite draconian measures in Hong Kong. Now, unvaccinated in the over 80s. In New Zealand, which has also had very little natural immunity... The vaccination rate in the over 80s was 98%. So 2% hadn't been vaccinated. Hence, the very low death rates and uh, hospitalisation rates, relatively speaking, in New Zealand, while natural immunity hopefully takes over, or will take, is taking over. Hong Kong, it's 66% of the over 80s not vaccinated. So here we have this very large, or the remnant of these, of course, very large what you might call target area of people that are going to get infected and are likely to get sick, especially. And even in the younger age groups, of course, we know there's still fairly high levels of uh, morbidity and potential mortality. Low levels of natural immunity. Apparently, the Al Jazeera report says they're out of coffins. It sounds quite horrendous. Uh, they're out of spaces in morgues. And there are stories from the Al Jazeera report of body bags on wards. Let's hope it's not in that way for very long. But... Um, it's been a bad situation in Hong Kong. Could China go the same way? Now, let's answer that by looking at some, some uh, graphics now, the orientators generally as well. New Delhi confirmed cases of COVID-19 per million. Now, um, China, very low numbers being reported. And on this graphic, that's probably still accurate, but that is about to change. United States and Canada, well, we know that the testing in Canada in, is, testing in Canada is essentially non-existent. So the, the, these, this figure bears no relationship at all, really, to the total amount of infections. We believe in Canada they are still fairly high. At United Kingdom, there has been an uptick, and we know that this is genuine because the COVID symptom tracker data and the Office for National Statistics data are showing the same thing. So even without defective testing and the fact that a lot of lateral flow tests are not being reported, even then we're still seeing this uptick in the UK. So that is absolutely genuine. Australia cases are going up, of course. Germany up. Now, Hong Kong and New Zealand. Let, let's look at New Zealand uh, first of all in blue. So a uh, dramatic rise, of course, as we expected, largely protected by vaccination, of course, and well, no way you can get a real trend from that. Um, who could say which way that's going to go? But we're fairly optimistic because New Zealand is now getting 
Huge Omicron exposure, generating huge amounts of natural immunity on top of the temporary immunity afforded by vaccination. So I'm pretty optimistic about New Zealand. Hong Kong, on the other hand, had much lower of vaccination preparation. And there was their numbers there. They went right up. Looks like they are going down now, which is good. Looks like they're just coming out of that wave now. Now, if we move on to the uh, the variant, now, unfortunately, our world in data at the moment is not giving us the breakdown between BA1 Omicron and BA2 Omicron. Hopefully, it's going to start doing that soon. We do know quite a bit of it, though, from uh, from background information. So, United States, BA2 will take over in the next few weeks. Now, what this means in the United States is there is going to be an increase in cases if they're able to detect it by testing, there's certainly going to be an increase in infections in the United States. And unfortunately, there will be some hopefully small increase in hospitalizations and uh, potentially deaths in the United States as BA2 takes over because it's accelerating the whole thing, because the BA2 is basically pretty well as transmissible as measles. It's phenomenally transmissible. Um, so that will take over in the States. In the United Kingdom, BA2 is already the majority. Um, not sure about uh, the New Zealand, German and Australia data on, on BA2. But we see Omicron as well and truly taken over. That is for sure. Um, no information there on China, unfortunately, from our world in data. But we do know from other sources that Omicron is the problem in China. It is the problem. It is the infection. Now, the R value, again, unfortunately, China and uh, Hong Kong aren't here, but there's the R value of one, which is neither increasing nor decreasing. Canada, cases are still going down, but of course, we know the testing is a joke. China, well, um, we, yeah, it's OK, it's saying, it's saying cases are going down in China, but we know we're not. We know, the, we know they're going up. Uh, United States, uh, United Kingdom definitely going up. Uh, New Zealand come down quite nicely. Australia still increasing largely due to the cases in Western Australia, which has just uh, opened up. Now, share of people who've had initial COVID vaccine protocols. So China, we see uh, Hong, Hong Kong. So Hong Kong, relatively low level. The, the, the problem in Hong Kong is not so much the overall lowish rate of vaccination. It's the very low rate of vaccination in the older grouping and particularly vulnerable grouping that's caused the high uh, death rate and high hospitalisation rate in Hong Kong. That's been the problem there. But China, so it looks to there like China's pretty near the, the top of the pile in terms of vaccination. But there's two big buts here. One, it was the first but is it was quite a long time ago. And the second one is it was a uh, Sinovac, which does not, is not, is not uh, as effective um, at preventing infection. And we believe not as effective at preventing hospitalization and death compared to the Western vaccines. So um, it looks like there could be a problem in China because of the type of vaccine that was used. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, United Kingdom, Hong Kong, United States for vaccination. But just to give a bit more information on, on vaccination, uh, th th this is the situation with uh, so that pre that previous one was uh, initial 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 course of vaccine. This is boosters. So again, we see China. Oops, we see China actually uh, fair way down. So high up on boosters, Germany, the United Kingdom, um, and a lot of the boosters in Germany, the United Kingdom have been relatively recent, although they are proposing. Or, or they are planning to start doing fourth doses of vaccine. And I think it's the over 75s. I'll have to check on that in the United Kingdom, um, which we're not going to comment on now. But that, that is, that is the, the proposal. Uh, so there we see uh, booster doses. China pretty low. Hong Kong pretty low. United States also quite low on booster doses. Uh, COVID vaccine initial doses and booster doses per 100 people. So this is booster doses. Now, China, we do see that they've had a lot of, uh, um, well, they've, they've, they've had some booster doses, 38% th th boost. Uh, not sure if that's percent. Any, anyway, you can see the relative size of the graphic there. Uh, more booster doses in the uh, United Kingdom. So it looks like China's fairly well prepared. Hong Kong, of course, not as well prepared down here. 
but as we said it's the it's the uh, it's a different type of vaccine which we believe is not as effective which is the concern um so i think that's probably all we had for graphics um yep that was it so let's get let's get back to the uh the china situation um yeah so um cases um that was the cases uh what was that, that anyway yeah that, that was the case that was the cases yesterday that's right and that was the cases two days ago so we can see that the cases look like they're going down there but in actual fact they're well actually that that, that could be genuine for reasons we'll see in a minute uh, there's been two deaths first deaths that have been reported since the 26th of january 2021 now, the COVID zero strategy is being perpetuated. Now, I think the problem here is the Chinese authorities really don't want to lose face on this. So rather than have a lot of deaths, that they're maintaining this zero COVID policy, which really can't work. It's just kicking the can down the road. It's just delaying things. That really is all it's doing. Now, the great irony here is it would stop flights when we suggested it back in February. Uh, 2020 this whole pandemic wouldn't have occurred so on this channel we we're advocating stopping flights it was obvious world health organization would say no go, go on flying you don't need to stop flying out of china still been no accountability for that the the, the, the committed the worst possible mistake in public health of the century uh, and there's been no comeback on it at all but the the irony is if that had st the flights had stopped then would have had no pandemic but the irony is that china managed to suppress the initial outbreak with that level of transmissibility and the draconian measures they took they could suppress the initial outbreak that's why i'm saying there could have potentially been no pandemic because if we're closed off china the chinese actually suppressed that and there would have been no pandemic I, I, that that's my view i don't believe there would have been a pandemic would have, would have shut it off um but the irony is now that it's come back to china and their draconian strategies will no longer I believe no longer be uh, be effective. They, they just can't be effective against Omicron. So um, tens of millions staying at home orders, in, particularly in some provinces. So tens of millions of Chinese, mu much more locked down than we ever were in our countries. Uh, very draconian stay at home orders. Travel bans in some areas. One province, eight, make, uh, eight makeshift hospitals and others in other parts of the country. The equivalent of the UK Nightingale Hospitals quarantine centre set up <clears throat> people quarantined for days or weeks. President Xi is going to stick with the zero COVID strategy. This is what he's saying. Continue to put people and life at the forefront. Well, of course, that sounds good. That's motherhood and apple pie. You can't argue with that. Uh, stick with scientific accuracy and dynamic zero is really patent uh, nonsense, I'm afraid. Um, that, that is just biologically impossible. You can't stop a virus with the transmissibility of the measles virus, which is almost what this BA2 is. So whether it's BA1 or BA2 in China at the moment doesn't matter. It's Omicron. Over time, of course, uh, BA2 will take over. Now, they, they can have with these dramatic lockdowns, even with the transmissible of Omicron, the transmissibility of Omicron, they can actually stop it in certain areas. But what are you going to do? Keep it closed off forever? keep it closed off from the rest of the world because endemicity is is coming our way. Now, we have very high infection rates in the UK at the moment. The prevalence is about 1 in 20. It's remarkably high. And that could, Tim Spector thinks, it's probably going to stay about 1 in 30 for some time because it's going to become endemic. And this is going to be the same all over the world, which is good because we're going to get constantly reinfected and constantly build up our immunity. So for the individuals, that's good. But the idea that China could keep that out without sealing themselves off from the world in some North Korea type fashion is impossible. So biologically, they, 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 what they're doing just makes no sense at all. President Xi again, and curb the spread of the epidemic as soon as possible. Well, no, um, let me get a different colored pen here because emphatically that, that, that's, that's no, 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 you can't. That, that, that's a, a red cross. You can't do that. If I was marking the paper, I'd mark it in red. You can't, you can't do that. You simply can't stop that. Um, now, on a completely separate matter, uh, this is the picture of uh, King Canute of England, who was a pious, uh, the story goes, was a pious, righteous king. And to demonstrate to his sycophantic courtiers that only God can stop the tide, he showed he couldn't stop the tide. 
I mean, you cannot stop the tide of Omicron. You, you can't stop it with, without being totally isolated. It is too transmissible. I got this story wrong last time, so I've made a bit of a better job of it this time. <laughs> king Canute looks like an English king, 1028. First recorded in the 1100s, I think it was, by Henry of Huntington. At least that's per Wikipedia, <laughs> which we wouldn't normally rely on for medical advice, but uh, I think it's quite acceptable for this. You cannot stop. No human being can order the stopping of the tide no more than they can stop the spreading of the Omicron uh, variant. So utterly bizarre, really. The, the idea that humans can override Omicron is just utterly ridiculous. Uh, now, I want to look at Africa briefly just before we finish. This was the shape of the Omicron wave in uh, South Africa. So we see it's gone down really quite dramatically. Hospitalizations, um, currently 2,000 people hospitalized in South Africa with a positive diagnosis. But we believe that well over half of these are incidental findings because, again, in South Africa, this is becoming endemic. And if we go on testing for the next decade, we'll still find people being admitted with appendicitis and broken legs or twisted ankles have got Omicron because it's endemic. So that's the South Africa situation, um, which is which is good. Um, again, just to look at that um, intervention. So 64 people <coughs> in intensive care, 224 people in the entire country of South Africa. Is it 60 million people, I think, um, currently oxygenated? And met, uh, probably about 60% of those or more are for non-COVID uh, non reasons. This is what natural immunity will do. Um, so that was South Africa. Now, I'm going to comment on Africa in, in a minute, just at the end. But before we do, uh, I want to get a report directly from our uh, friend in uh, Uganda. And uh, Wafaf has been talking to lots and lots of African nurses and doctors. Uh, and this is uh, this is his report. Wafafa, thank you very much as always. Hello everyone, welcome to today's COVID-19 update for East Africa. It is the 18th of March 2022. Now the number of cases in East Africa is continuing to decline day by day. Today Uganda reported a total of only seven cases about out of uh, 2,975 uh, tests uh, performed today, which gives us a positivity rate of around 0.2%. And we only have seven active cases admitted at the health facilities. Now, as I said in a previous video, across the whole country, we have a lot of treatment centers. But right now, we only have seven cases, which may be only in one or two treatment centers. So the rest of uh, the treatment centers in the country are vacant. And those people admitted, we have those ones with, of course, moderate signs and symptoms and those ones who are in uh, ICU. And in fact, we may not have anyone in ICU at the moment. I'll just have to find out from the nearby treatment center, maybe if I happen to meet uh, Dr. Machach again. But otherwise, the numbers are continuing to decrease. And when you look at Kenya, the same thing is still happening. Like today, they reported a total of about only 19, uh, 18 new cases out of 4,732 tests performed, which gave them a rate, uh, a positivity rate of around 0.4%. When you look at the total recoveries have also increased and the number of cumulative tests has also increased. Now, uh, when you look at the vaccination, uh, let's go back to Uganda a bit. Uh, Uganda has administered a total of uh, 17,197,954 doses of vaccine. This includes those who have received both the first and second dose. Uh, the vaccination rates are still very low in East Africa, that is Uganda and Kenya. For example, Uganda, uh, only about 8 million people have received both first and second dose. So the decrease in number of cases, we can't just attribute it to this vaccination rate because it is very low. Still, 
I think it is due to Omicron that came in because uh, when it came in, the cases went up and as many people started having signs and symptoms, uh, we started seeing that the number of cases in the country started decreasing day by day. Now, Kenya is a neighbor to Uganda. So uh, that is the same situation in these two countries. That is all for today. See you in the next video. The be Excellent. Uh, thank you, Rafa, for that, as always. Um, so, seven cases, 0 0.2 positivity. Now, of course, we know the testing's rubbish, but only seven active cases in the health centres. So that is that is genuine. The, the basically, Kent, Uganda is essentially over the Omicron wave with a massive immunity that this has generated, as Rafa has said there. And this is based. No, okay. The centralised data is not brilliant, but this is based on talking to a lot of uh, fellow clinicians in in Uganda. So we think this date. Well, we know this data is accurate. Well, it's certainly accurate. In, in uh, he's been talking to a group of people. You can't say it's accurate for the whole country, but it's looking accurate because the, the the official data is showing only seven active cases. So that is excellent. Uganda again. You know, the, the Uganda and uh, Kenya, rather, but both large population countries, essentially no cases. But um, I think Uganda, I think he said only 8 million people have had the full course of the vaccine out of the full population. So this is due to natural immunity from uh, Omicron, which Rafafa has said there and which reflects uh, the conversations he's had with many doctors uh, in Uganda. So the, the opportunity to... Um, help Africa with COVID vaccination would appear to be passed because the the uh, the Omicron is the vaccine that um, according to the the Ugandan doctors we've talked to the, the Omicron is the vaccine that they didn't uh, get out or failed to make. Now just before we finish on that point um, I just read an article here from the this is from the Guardian the popular press but apparently they, they've come across a document which uh, shows that there's a compromise between the United States, the European Union, India, South Africa and big business, big pharma to end the deadlock over an intellectual property, wa property waiver for the vaccine. Now, this was first uh, uh, mooted to the World Economic Group or whatever it's called. I can't remember. Um, I've forgotten the name of it. But it was first mooted about getting on for two years ago now, 18 months ago at least. So it looks like they might be on just on the on the cusp of making some tentative agreement to waive intellectual property rights for uh, allowing um, African countries to make their own vaccine against COVID-19. Um, <laughs> as we've seen, Omicron has already done the job. This is laughable. This is laughable. So it looks like if we had a combination of um, the United States, the European Union, India and South Africa and big business all together in a brewery, they would really struggle to get a few thirsty people drunk. You could have 100,000 litres of lager there and 10,000 litres of beer there and 5,000 bottles of whiskey there and 10,000 of bottles of gin there and several hundred people waiting for a drink round about and all these would be sitting there at the meetings. And uh, 18 months later, it looks like the first drink wouldn't have been served. It really is completely, utterly laughable if it wasn't so serious. Now, fortunately, I believe fortunately, Omicron has come along and, and, and saved these the, the, these many lives in Africa. Uh, no thanks to the United States, European Union, the United Kingdom has been involved in this as well, of course. India, South Africa uh, and uh, big business trying to organise an intellectual property waiver right. It's just a complete joke. Uh, and they, I really do believe that these groupings could not organise a few drinks in a brewery. Which bodes well if there's a future pandemic that's much more pathogenic and much more virulent and much more faster transmitting than this. It really doesn't bode well at all. Let, let's hope we can get some proactive mechanisms, proactive mechanisms in place for next time, because there will be a next time. But for this time, it's looking good in Africa, quite concerned about China. Cases are going to go up in the uh, United States. They are going up in the UK now. I believe this will be short-lived. I believe the change is the BA2 taking over from the BA1. But that is going to generate a lot of immunity. What we don't know, and this, this is still a concern, is the degree to which Omicron is likely to cause long COVID. No data on that yet. I've been looking out for it on a daily basis. 
as soon as we find it of course we will we'll talk about that but we can say that levels of immunity are increasing dramatically as we speak for example in the uk one in 20 people is currently currently uh, infected so um, there we are uh, a mixture of news today and thank you for watching